Welcome to my latest YouTube video where I'm going to count down my favorite top 12 back issue comic books that I acquired in 2019. Before we get started, I want to thank Justa Rican and his comics who featured my channel recently on his comic book community shout out show. Rod, you do such an amazing job on your content and on your shows, and I felt so honored and privileged that you included me on that. It meant the world to me, so I just wanted to take a minute to acknowledge you and thank you for what you bring to the table. If you're a new subscriber or a recent subscriber to my channel, we'll do some shout outs myself at the end of this video. The criteria that I set forth in my top 12 favorite comic book back issues that I acquired in 2019, it had to be a comic book that I never owned before. So books that maybe I upgraded a condition copy of didn't qualify. So with that having been said, why don't we get started with number 12. I don't know how many people would have an Adventures of Jerry Lewis comic book on their top 12 countdown, and I certainly don't own any other books in this title, but the Adventures of Jerry Lewis number 117 is a book that I've wanted for quite some time. With a name like Magic Lasso, you know I'm a Wonder Woman collector. I've known about this comic book since I was a child. I've never actually seen a physical copy of it myself anywhere. Not in any store, not at any convention. I've gone to a few different conventions too where there was a bunch of Jerry Lewis comic books. And I start flipping through them. There's 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 118. Never is there 117. This features an appearance by the non-powered Diana Prince version of Wonder Woman, which was the current incarnation of Wonder Woman in continuity at the time that this was published. The story isn't the greatest, but I love to have the comic book since I try to be such a completist. I won't forget either, this book I purchased on eBay. And, you know, I had to put in that last moment sniping bid right at the end. And I was driving at the time that it was down to less than a minute. I had to pull over and put my bid in, got the high bid, got it at quite a steal. I hadn't seen a book, a copy of this book go as low as I got it for in quite some time. So I was very happy to add this to my collection. Moving on to number 11. It's another book that I've wanted uh, since I was a child. And I was aware of the Doom Patrol. This is issue number 104, a nice Silver Age book that features the marriage between Elastigirl and Mento. The Doom Patrol TV series that came out this year had some great content to it. Yeah, it did get a little strange frequently at different times, but overall, when the season was done, I really enjoyed it. As I said, I was aware of this issue since I was a kid. Never was able to find it. As a matter of fact, this is the only Silver Age Doom Patrol comic book that I own from Volume 1. I'd like to get some more to add to my collection. I found uh, this book first this year in Chicago, but the condition wasn't very good, and I thought the price was way too high, especially considering the condition. And it was tough for me to leave it behind, but I just knew it wasn't the right copy for me. And I'm glad I did leave it behind, because a couple months later, at a different convention, at a different state... I found a dealer that actually had two copies of it, and uh, I picked it up. You might see a $13 price tag on there, too. I got it less than half of that price. It uh, features nice little JLA cameo as they attend the wedding between Elastigirl and Mento in the issue. So we're up to number 10. Firestorm the Nuclear Man, number 3. Of course, this is volume 1 from the comic book. I had uh, Firestorm Volume 1, Number 1 in my collection since uh, I was a kid, but I didn't have the remaining issues. As a matter of fact, this year I ended up picking up all of the issues and uh, reread them and really actually enjoyed the story arc. Uh, the book didn't last very long, but certainly enjoyed the stories there. This is a key issue as it's the first appearance of Killer Frost, and I love this incarnation of Killer Frost especially. It was the cover that really hooked me. When I saw this cover, I'm like, yeah, that cover just kind of screams my name. I, I need to have this book in my collection. And uh, with it being a key book, you know, the price is a little bit higher for it. I found a good deal for it. I was pretty happy with the price that I paid for it and happy to add it into my collection. 
We're moving on to number nine now, which is the first Marvel book that we have making an appearance. It also is the only book out of this top 12 that I actually haven't read yet. I just acquired this uh, a few months ago and haven't gotten around to reading it yet. Iron Fist number 15. As you see, there's a X-Men guest star in the book. And it's my understanding that this is the first time that John Byrne drew the X-Men. I've heard the story's really good. I know the art's great. This is John Byrne in his prime. So I'm looking forward to getting the chance to read it. And even despite the fact not having read the story yet, it still makes my top 12 list. And I got a feeling you're going to see some more X-Men in this list as well. But as we move on to number eight, The Mighty Isis. This is issue number seven. I was missing three Isis comic books, uh, which only ran eight issues of her own title. And you never can find these Isis comic books anywhere. If you do find an Isis, it's either Isis number one or it's Shazam number 25, which is the first comic book appearance of Isis. You never find any of the other issues. This was an A-OK. -okay. The three remaining books that I needed, which I believe were number four, number seven, and number eight, which number eight was the final issue, I got from my friend Mark Bray as an A-OK -okay earlier this year. He found them for me, and I couldn't be happier. I love the stories, brought back memories of the TV show that I used to watch. The reason that I selected this issue in particular, instead of number four or number eight, this did a origin of Isis in there. Um, just really enjoyed the book, enjoyed the read, and I can see me rereading this entire series many times in the future. So I had to include that too because it was tough. The struggle was real to get these Isis comic books, and the struggle is over. We move on to number seven in the list. I said some X-Men would make an appearance. A key issue is X-Men 120. It's the first appearance of Alpha Flight, mostly in the background slash cameos. Uh, the next issue, 121, they make a, a big full appearance in the book. Uh, I acquired 120 and 121 at the same time. These books go pretty high online, and uh, I found a deal. I was It was from uh, a place that I had never ordered from before, but I definitely would order from again. I was happy with the condition. I was happy with the price. And uh, I was happy that I don't have to worry about trying to find this book at an affordable price anymore. I think X-Men, the Uncanny X-Men title, makes the most appearances in my top 12 list, including the number six spot. X-Men 164 features Carol Danvers with her first appearance as Binary. When the Captain Marvel movie came out earlier this year, Marvel reprinted this comic book in their Dollar True Believer line, and I picked it up then. For some reason, this book had always eluded me, even back in the day uh, as a young child collecting. This book always eluded me. Never got a copy of it. And since I got back into my collecting, especially my back issue collecting in the last uh, year and a half to two years, I, when I could find this book, it was too expensive for the grade of the comic. So the grade wasn't that good and they were asking a lot of money. But at a recent local convention, almost at the end, I found a copy and uh, all the stars aligned. The price was right and uh, the condition was right. So I picked it up and I'm quite happy. That means we're up to number five, Super Friends number seven. It's the first comic book appearance of the Wonder Twins, Zan and Jaina, plus their space monkey Gleek. We also saw the uh, Wendy and Marvin and Wonder Dog characters kind of ushered out in this issue to bring the Wonder Twins forward. This is a key book for first comic book appearance of the Wonder Twins. It's an expensive book. Uh, I'm really happy with the condition that I got this in, although it could probably use a, a good pressing right down there. That would make it a little bit better. But I ended up getting this as part of a lot of Super Friends comic books from issue 1 through 13. And some of those books I needed to have upgraded copies of. Some of them I didn't have at all. And I got the entire lot of books even cheaper than what you normally pay for issue number 7 alone. So all that equals a win-win. We're up to number four. It's our final X-Men book in my top 12 list. The Uncanny X-Men 134, part of the Dark Phoenix saga. 
finds uh, Jean Grey as the Black Queen. I love the cover. Of course, if you watch the TV show Stranger Things way back in season one, this is the comic book that Will was betting when, when the boys were going to race home and Will ends up disappearing. He says, you know, I'll race you. Uh, you get my X-Men 134, or I'll get your X-Men 134. So I know Stranger Things fans have been looking for this book. Of course, it's part of the Dark Phoenix saga, which makes it collectible as well. There's a lot of cross-collectability to this book. I finally have completed having original copies of all of the Phoenix Saga this year, too. But I wanted to include 134 because it's one of my favorite parts of the Phoenix Saga. Up to number three. Some of my videos uh, this year, I've mentioned that I've become uh, a bigger Black Canary fan lately. And I shouldn't say bigger because I've always enjoyed Black Canary. But uh, I, I really kind of got into a Black Canary kick. And uh, if you're into the Black Canary, you have to have the first Silver Age appearance of Black Canary. It's Justice League of America number 75. This is where she joins uh, the team. I do want to get 73 and 74, which is the two-part JLA-JSA crossover that features Black Canary. It turns out to be that it's the final. those issues are the final appearance of the, of the uh, Golden Age Black Canary, and this is the first appearance of the Silver Age Black Canary. I never thought I'd find this book. Um, I've seen it a few times. It's always kind of been a little bit out of my price range or something has evaded me in, in getting this book. But it was an eBay purchase that uh, ended up just, I, I saw it and it was about to end and I'm like, I can't let it go for that cheap. And I put my bid in, which still was cheap and it ended up becoming mine. So that's number three in my top 12 list. As we move on to number two, the runner up, of course, when you're Magic Lasso, you have to have a Wonder Woman comic book in your list. At least one. Wonder Woman number 75 at number two on my list was an A-OK -okay from two very great friends. We found this at the uh, same convention that I was talking about with the X-Men 164 earlier. And this book is in such amazing condition. I love the story. There's two stories actually inside. One features the Angle Man, and this is before he had the costume and the Angler. And I actually like that story better than the one that they chose to depict on the cover. Um, it's my second oldest Wonder Woman Volume 1 comic book that I have. And I absolutely love it. Um, never thought I would have this book. And it ranks as number two on my list. As I've mentioned in some collecting before, my goal was to collect Wonder Woman Volume 1, number 106 on up. Because issue number 105 is scarce and uh, never be able to find one, let alone be able to afford one. So that's why I always chose to collect from issue 106 on up. Anything I got before 106 was just going to be icing on the cake. That brings us to our number one position of the top 12 back issues that I added to my collection that I love the most for 2019. And believe it or not, with that having been said... I got a Wonder Woman number 105. I'd never even seen a copy of this comic book with my own eyes until this year at C2E2. Two different vendors had it for sale, and both of them were out of my price range, and both sold before the convention ended. But I had some money set aside. I thought, you never know, maybe someday. Not only did this comic book fall within my budget that I had set aside... I actually had money left over. Couldn't resist it. Um, I do need to get this uh, pressed and sent off to CGC sometime. That's a future goal of mine, too. It will be probably my first graded comic book that I own. I'm looking forward to that. But Wonder Woman, number 105, labeled scarce by Overstreet Price Guide, is my number one position for 2019 back issues that I acquired, my top 12 favorites. Thank you for taking some time to watch this video. Let's give some shout out to some great folks who've recently subscribed to the channel. I want to thank Unruly Simeon, Los. Now, Los, I know we've been in chats together and I've heard people brag on his channel, so I'm looking forward to going and spending some time of my own on there. Life with Two YouTubers is a subscriber as well. Thank you, Sharon. Chino Comics and more. The 88 Jester. Marcus Roberts. Comics for Thomas. Uh, Tom, Comics for Thomas is, is a great channel, great content. We were in the same chat room and we were chatting back and forth on someone else's channel. And 
I subscribed to his channel. He subscribed to mine. I was recently watching one of his videos and enjoying it. And then he just gave me a shout out at the end of one of his videos and talked about how he enjoyed uh, some of the private messaging that we've done, which I have too. So thank you so much. It's, it's uh, Making friends in this community is what it's all about. And Comics for Thomas is a good friend to have. Sam's Tangled Web is another recent subscriber to my channel. We have um, Geeky GMT, Tacoma Comics, Rob Wurst. Rob was featured recently on a live stream that I was watching and really got into his channel. And he has some amazing books and stuff that he showcases. And I'm looking forward to delving even more in there. United Comics Universe is a, is a subscriber. Gomez Comic Collector. The Coach Vic7. Here's a username that I really like. Conquistadorks. I love saying that. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Also to Thomas Williams 8484. Fuchsia only. Every time Fuchsia comes into the chat, everyone's like, Fuchsia! Air Spider 23. Just a little podcast. R.A. Random Wolf. We have Thierry 23 with a little asterisk afterwards. I saw uh, Thierry make his debut his uh facial on screen debut um on a recent upload a recent live video too that was pretty cool stacy's fat stacks i like that username uh sam i am comics is uh, another subscriber and take the time collectibles and that's with dashes in between take dash the dash time dash collectibles uh all recent subscribers to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet please do so it certainly supports the channel you can click the subscribe button. If you click the notification bell, you'll be instantly alerted when new content is added to this channel. I want to thank everyone that spent time uh, not only watching this video, but my previous videos as well, and welcoming me, me, welcoming me into the YouTube comic book community in 2019. I certainly feel your support and kindness, and it really is appreciated. In this new year, I wish you all of the best of health, luck, and success. And I thank you for letting me be part of your journey. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to do in 2020 as well and where your journey is going to take you. My next video, we're going to start looking at um, the top 12 comic books I want to acquire.